morning, uh, to be here today on the traditional territory of the Lekongan speaking people, the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nation. And I'm joined uh, virtually today by Minister Mike Farnworth, and we are going to be talking about the challenges drivers are facing in British Columbia over the past number of weeks and uh, some of the other inflationary pressures that are affecting people's lives here in British Columbia. Today, if we go to fill up at the pumps, sometimes it feels like it's a bit of a holdup. Uh, prices are at unprecedented levels, and those prices at the pump are a direct result of Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. The challenges of disruptions in international uh, markets and disruptions in commodity prices are unavoidable, not just here in British Columbia and in Canada, but indeed around the world. But British Columbians still need to move around. Uh, we have a robust uh, transportation network, uh, public transit in our major urban centres, but large parts of British Columbia depend on single occupancy vehicles to get around, as do businesses who depend on using fleets or vehicles to conduct their trade throughout BC. So with these increases that we've seen, uh, I asked Minister Farnworth, Minister Robinson, the Finance Minister, to look at what options we had to provide relief to British Columbians. We want to make sure that we do what we can to make people's lives a little bit better. That's been our focus since we formed government. Whether it was removing medical services premiums uh, forever, whether it was uh, eliminating tolls for those who traveled in parts of British Columbia, whether it was ensuring that we fixed what was uh, referred to so graphically as a dumpster fire at ICBC. The work at ICBC and the work of drivers across British Columbia have allowed us to provide two previous rebates to drivers, their money going back to them, and also, of course, because of the robust financial shape that the corporation is now in, we've been able to see a drastic decline in the cost of a policy. But despite our best efforts to find ways uh, within the system to reduce costs for British Columbians, we've gone back to ICBC once again because of, again, the strong financial position they find themselves in as we come to the end of the current fiscal year. And we've been advised by the board and the executive that we'd be able to provide a one-time relief payment of $110 to personal drivers and up to $165 for commercial transportation. These small contributions will be large for many people across British Columbia, and we're very grateful for the hard work at ICBC from the staff uh, and from those policyholders who have reduced prangs, and we've also seen, of course, increased dollars through investments. Uh, Minister Farnworth can talk about uh, the robust position of the corporation at this time. But we're confident that these one-time contributions of 110 to individuals and 165 to businesses are timely to help ease some of the pressure on pocketbooks when it comes to uh, gas prices. This is, again, uh, directly a result of international war in Europe that has disrupted supply chains and disrupted commodity prices. I've looked at other jurisdictions across the country. The only other uh, provinces that have public auto insurance uh, opportunities like this, uh, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. Saskatchewan has taken uh, advantage of that and provided a similar uh, rebate to their drivers. Others have chosen to address taxation, and I've talked about this uh, at some length, but I think the public needs to know that the amount of money that they pay in taxes at the pump is on the pump when you pull up. You know every time you fill up what portion is going to TransLink if you live in the Lower Mainland, what portion is going to BC Transit if you live outside of um, the Lower Mainland and in areas where public transit is provided. And you also know that the, the, the amount that we pay for carbon taxes here in British Columbia go right back to people and to businesses to drive down emissions by ensuring that we can do retrofit programs and other initiatives to make life more affordable and reduce our impact on the environment. We were reluctant and, in fact, would not amend the taxation because it would just be filled by an increase in prices at the pump. And we saw that in Alberta, where the government promised a 13-cent tax reduction on a Monday, and on a Wednesday, the price went up 14 cents. We believe this is the best way to get money into people's pockets, and I'll pass it over to Minister Farnworth to provide some of the details. Thank you, Premier, and good morning, everyone. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that I'm joining you from Merritt, and the, and the lands of the uh, Anglicapum people. It's been two years since the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted our lives. During that time, British Columbians have proven time and again how resilient they are. 
We've experienced the impacts of global supply chain issues and how, he, how here in BC we are affected by world events. The Russian invasion of Ukraine has resulted in an unprecedented increase in the price of gas and other day-to-day -day goods. Today, we're here to announce relief. Since May of 2021, ICBC's new enhanced care model of insurance has lowered premiums while ensuring better care. The majority of customers renewing their full personal auto insurance under enhanced care have saved on average $490 per year. This follows two COVID-19 rebates issued by ICBC last year that provided drivers with an average of $300 combined. I'm pleased that we are able to issue a relief rebate this spring. Drivers with personal policies will receive a rebate of $110, while commercial customers who generally incur higher expenses will receive a rebate of $165. It's a total of more than $395 million going directly back to the people in British Columbia. People will begin to receive their rebates starting in May. This is one more way that this government is making life more affordable for people. Thanks very much. Thank you. As a reminder to media on the phone line, please press star one to enter the queue. You're limited to one question and one follow-up. First question today is from Rob Shaw, Czech News. Oh, hi, Premier. Uh, I know that TransLink yesterday announced it's raising fares 2.3%, uh, and I, I think there's an argument some people have made of why not use some of this money for public transit here in Victoria or in Vancouver, lower the prices there rather than give it to motorists directly and make a more economical or better overall solution through public transit. Did you think about that or why wasn't that part of this? Well, we did look at the taxes at the pump, which is uh, certainly uh, there are people in the community who feel that this would be a more appropriate way to act. But we've had advice from uh, the UBC economists and others who have advised us that a reduction in taxes at the pump would only be replaced by an increase in the commodity price. Uh, similarly, uh, we believe that TransLink and BC Transit are operating in the public interest. They need to manage their fleet, they need to manage their fare box uh, to complement the work that, or the, the resources that they can get through uh, gas taxes and any direct uh, contributions from orders of government. Uh, that's how it's been operating. We believe that uh, this is the best way forward to ensure that we're addressing challenges in areas where there is no access to public transit, which is a big, big chunk of real estate from uh, outside of uh, the Lower Mainland throughout most of uh, northern interior British Columbia. Uh, we had uh, certainly loud, heard loudly and clearly that there are many people who do not have the opportunity to avail themselves of a world-class transit system as we have uh, in uh, our metropolitan areas. Uh, so this, we felt, was the best way to ensure that we could protect those uh, drivers, and also uh, those who would uh, have uh, inflationary pressures brought to bear as a result of uh, Vladimir Putin's war in Europe. Rob, do you have a follow-up? Sure, thanks. Uh, I know your government has said in the past many times that the BC Liberals used ICBC like a piggy bank, taking profits out of it to spend on things when it was in a strong financial position, rather than letting the corporation use the money internally to prepare for the ups and downs of an insurance company. Are you not doing just the same thing here, using ICBC as a piggy bank to address a, a problem and taking money away from it? No, well, and I don't believe we are. Uh, we brought in legislation to prevent future governments from dipping into reserves at ICBC to pad their budgets. What we're doing here and what uh, Minister Farnworth has explained for the two previous COVID uh, benefits are giving money back to the policyholders, the people who finance ICBC. This is a rebate based on the robust position that the corporation is in and that full marks uh, to the executive and the management team as well as the board uh, for transforming what was a dumpster fire, uh, ap aptly called, uh, into a corporation that is in a position to provide relief to the people who fund it, the policyholders. And perhaps Minister Farnworth can, can add to that, but this is, this is uh, apples and oranges comparisons. This is about giving the money back to the people who put it in the pot, not taking out of the pot to meet political uh, needs within government. Please go ahead, Minister. No, thank you. And just, just to follow up on that, so ICBC is in a significantly stronger uh, uh, financial position than was predicted at the beginning of the, uh, of the fiscal year uh, this year. Uh, and as a result, it's not only able to meet its capital requirements, 
uh, but also allows us in the uh, in the case of, uh, of of this particular year to be able, as the premier said, to rebate uh, some of that money back to the policyholders, uh, the ones who are uh, you know financing the uh, the company through through their insurance their insurance policies. Uh, it's not going back to uh, to general revenue. It is going back uh, to the uh, to the individual policyholders. Next question is from Cole Schisler, Black Press. Are you there, Cole? Okay. Sorry, hi. Oh, Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for taking my question. Um, so at $110 for the average driver, depending on where you live, that's about a tank and a half of gas, maybe less. Um, how far is this $110 really going to go to make life more affordable for British Columbia? Well, I think it's a significant contribution at a very difficult time for drivers as they look at the price at the pump to know that there's relief on the way, I think is, uh, is going to be positive news. Uh, I appreciate that uh, government can't uh, buffet uh, or protect consumers from uh, runaway prices uh, uh, other than using the tools that are at our disposal to reduce costs. And in this instance, we're able to provide a, 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 an amount of money back to policyholders, to drivers, to help them along the way. I believe that it'll be welcomed. Uh, it is, uh, again, by comparison to the, uh, the, the move in Alberta, which won't take effect until April 1st, it was based on the price of the commodity and it was going to be a direct tax reduction, which would work out to about uh, five bucks a week. Uh, so $110 uh, in a one-time fund or five bucks a week as uh, the Alberta situation uh, is going to manifest itself, I think will be welcomed certainly uh, uh, on border, in border communities uh, where there's an opportunity to, uh, uh, to shop across the line. Uh, we want to, of course, keep people in British Columbia, but uh, consumers uh, are driven by uh, price and uh, price points. Uh, they'll make those choices, those personal choices, and, uh, and we'll leave them to do that. Cole, do you have a follow-up? Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, I, I lost my question a bit there. Um, if prices skyrocket further, if we go back to the, you know, over 220 mark at the pump, uh, does the government have further measures that you can take? And can you shed light on what further measures might be at the government's disposal? Well, Cole, uh, we're making an announcement today. Uh, we have capacity to make other announcements in the future, but we're, we're monitoring uh, inflationary pressures, not just at the pump, but uh, across uh, the economy. And uh, we're always ready to uh, step in if the need arises. Uh, but today's announcement stands on its own. Uh, it will assist businesses, it will assist drivers. Uh, and we have other uh, tools at our disposal that we're looking at for other interventions as uh, uh, the spring unfolds and we get into the summer. Uh, we do not know what the consequences of Vladimir Putin's uh, uh, aggression in Ukraine, the, a war in Ukraine will have on the global economy, the global marketplace. Uh, so all governments, not just British Columbia, and I, and I think this is a, a, a caution for people who are tuning in right now and hearing me uh, speak, that uh, we are not out of the woods yet. Uh, we are in for a series of uh, a time of instability here in, in British Columbia and in Canada and indeed around the world. And so we want to ensure that we're able to respond uh, the Minister of Finance uh, looked at this very carefully through our processes. Uh, we didn't act uh, swiftly, as some will argue. Uh, I'm sure I can, I can almost read the Liberal press release now, but uh, we acted prudently. We made sure that we waited till near the end of the fiscal year so that ICBC could have a clear picture of what their financial situation was. That's a responsible thing to do. Uh, I pride uh, our government on our ability to uh, be prudent, uh, be focused, but also at the center of everything we do, have people in mind. So as the summer uh, progresses, as the spring progresses into summer, uh, if there are further uh, inflationary pressures, we'll be working uh, to try and find ways to reduce costs for people. Next question is from Yvonne Raymond, CTV Vancouver Island. Hi, I'm just wondering how you came up with $110 for personal vehicles and $165 for commercial. What's, uh, what's the, um, I guess, significance behind the exact number? Well, I'll, I'll pass that to uh, Minister Farnworth to respond. Uh, it's a direct result of the financial situation at ICBC, and, and he can shed some light on that. Go ahead, Minister. Oh. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, it's exactly looking at the uh, the financial situation of ICBC in terms of what was projected at the uh, the beginning of the year, uh, finding the balance between what uh, ICBC required in terms of its capital uh, requirements and what uh, potentially would be available uh, to uh, to provide in the form of uh, a relief rebate to policyholders. That's how we came up with the uh, the uh, the number, uh, and it's about uh, three hundred ninety five four hundred million dollars. Uh, that would be available, and then recognizing that commercial vehicles uh, are on the road more, have uh, more ex more uh, expenses, uh, and so the the hundred and ten dollars and the hundred and sixty five dollars was achieved uh, on that basis uh, as a way of uh, ensuring that everybody is treated equitably, but also recognizing from the commercial vehicle perspective that they do have uh, some higher higher operating costs. Follow up, Ivan. No, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Vaughn Palmer, Vancouver Sun. Good day, Premier. Good day, Minister. Um, if ICBC can afford to give this kind of money back to policyholders, doesn't that suggest that ICBC was overcharging and should have been offering these rebates this month in any event? Well, I'll, I'll, again, I'll let Mike answer the substance of that, Vaughn, but uh, the available uh, resource to do this is a result uh, largely of investments uh, that ICBC makes, as you know, to uh, ensure that they have uh, appropriate funds to manage any eventuality going forward. And the instability uh, caused in the marketplace has led to uh, an increase in value for commodities that uh, ICBC uh, may invest in, but, but Mike can give you more detail on that. But it's... Uh, it wasn't about too many policy dollars in the pot. It was about uh, having a, a, a positive year end as a result of investments that the corporation makes on behalf of policyholders. Go ahead, Minister. Yeah, no, thank you. And just following up on that, uh, what we've seen since the reduction of uh, enhanced care was the uh, uh, a reduction in rates uh, on average of about 20%. Uh, the rates being uh, frozen in place, uh, working through the Utilities Commission. Uh, so for three years of stability, rate stability, um, that has allowed with the, uh, as the Premier stated, the investment returns that uh, ICBC has received to not only deal with the financial position that it was in, uh, to significantly move to rebuilding the, uh, the capital reserves for the, uh, the minimum capital test that's required in the plan that's in place around that, and recognizing that because of the, uh, the, the good financial management, there has been uh, this ability to provide uh, a one-time uh, uh, rebate based on the performance of the ICBC uh, over, the, uh, over the past year. Juan, do you have a follow-up? Yes, please. Uh, Premier, uh, you and uh, Bruce Ralston have both referred to a pending report from the BC Utilities Commission with its recommendations on how uh, to proceed uh, to manage or otherwise deal with gasoline prices. Um, and several times referred to that it's, it's coming soon. Um, what, what can people, when, first of all, when can we expect to see that report? And what can people expect uh, that it will lead to? Uh, well, Vaughn, I'm not aware of uh, the timing of the report, uh, nor am I, uh aware of the content but i can say broadly to drivers uh, one of the initiatives that we brought forward as you know well was to bring forward legislation to ensure that the commission had the ability to look into uh, unusual increases in in the price at the pump uh, to ensure that there was an explanation as to why the prices were going up that allows uh, customers uh, british columbians to have confidence that there's no gouging going on. You've been covering this issue for a long, long time, and you know that whenever there's a spike uh, in prices, there's an immediate uh, expectation that there's gouging going on. Uh, the uh, the anti-tax crowd says it's all about taxes. The taxes stayed the same. The price of the commodity goes up. And so allowing the Utilities Commission, the, the, those who have expertise in the field, to review these increases and to determine why the price went up, how it was being uh, decline, how it will decline over time, I think is useful for the traveling public, and more importantly, it's it's useful for all British Columbians, whether they uh, uh, drive a, a car or not, to know that uh, we're not being uh, gouged because of uh, uh, challenges uh, in other markets. So uh, I think that the the review will be useful. 
uh, for government to understand what's happening in the marketplace, uh, not from a, a, a partisan perspective, but from an independent perspective, which is what the, uh, uh, the people at the Commission can provide for not just government, for British Columbia. Keith Baldry, Global News. Oh, hi, Lindsay, was that me? Yes, please. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, given the robust financial health of uh, ICBC, uh, it begs the question, why wasn't the rebate even bigger? It wasn't just investment income at ICBC that has a, a, a better a bottom line. Also, claims are dropping dramatically. Uh, was the expectation perhaps a little uh, out there that this rebate would have been higher than 110? Rick McCandless, former civil servant who has intervener status at the Utilities Commission, his analysis suggested it could afford a, at least $125 this year. Thank you for the question. Uh, and I know Rick, uh, and he, I, I know that he is uh, among uh, a handful of experts on this, uh, this issue, and uh, I, I certainly value his, his input. Uh, but I have to say, and, and you will know this, uh, Keith, that uh, finance ministers, certainly for the past five years, have looked with dread at the bottom line at ICBC because it swings uh, so much in short periods of time. And we wanted to wait till the right near the end of the fiscal year so we could have certainty that the corporation did have a robust bottom line. And I have been in this job now for five years. And at this time of the year, I have seen more often than not uh, the situation at ICBC deteriorate over a matter of days to a point where it's had a material impact on our budget. So uh, we wanted to make sure we were following this and tracking it uh, to the last possible moment to give relief to drivers, but also to ensure that we were not putting the corporation back into the dumpster. And Mike can uh, uh, talk about the uh, reduction in accidents and, the, and what that means for the, the vitality of the corporation. Yeah, no, we have seen a, a reduction in, in accidents, certainly through the uh, the period of COVID, uh, but we are coming out of COVID and we are seeing more and more people on the road, uh, people getting out to, you know, to travel again in a way that they haven't been able to do for the last few years. And so it's been critical that we try and maintain that balance between recognizing the, the strong financial position that ICBC has found itself in at the year end with a recognition that while claims have gone down during the COVID period, the reality is, is we are moving out of that uh, and we, we may well see, uh, uh, you know, a potential increase. So it's, a, it's that balance between ensuring uh, this recognizing the strong financial position, what ICBC requires and um, the, uh, the 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 surplus um, or the, the the unexpected the ex the windfall, if you like, uh, that we can return to policyholders in the form of a, uh, a relief rebate. Keith, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, given again the the dramatic turnaround in ICBC finances and, and the fiscal plan itself, the three-year fiscal plan projects more modest surpluses in the next couple of years. But is it realistic for policyholders now to expect rebates? each and every year? Uh, that's a good question. And uh, we have been fortunate, as uh, Minister Farmworth has said, uh, to have uh, surpluses that were sufficient to provide funds back to the policyholders. And that, that was welcome news. Uh, and this, I'm, I'm sure, will be welcome news as well. But uh, we want to make sure that we're taking these steps as they come, rather than looking too far down the road. Uh, we want to protect the hard work of, of drivers and the uh, uh, the team at ICBC to get it back into a position where we can make decisions like this. And uh, taking advantage too soon of that positive situation could well uh, imperil any more success going forward. We want to make sure rates stay low. Uh, and, and the way to do that is to uh, allow the corporation to make these decisions in consultation with the board and the government. And, uh, and that's what we've been doing. And we'll keep on that track, uh, always mindful that uh, uh, again, from our own personal experience, much less the experience of drivers over the past decade, uh, price, uh, the, the cost of car insurance was unsustainable for many individuals and families. We've been able to turn that around because of hard work uh, by the corporation and by the team that we sent in to find a way forward. Uh, we want to make sure we don't lose track of that. Our last question today comes from Mira Baines, CBC. Okay. Uh, Premier, I know you mentioned that you'll be monitoring gas prices and the situation um, uh, that's happening in Ukraine, but I'm wondering, do you have any sort of a hard date when you'll be uh, reviewing um, uh, gas prices again? You know, this is the one-time uh, only uh, rebate right now. 
but could we see another rebate in the future? Well, we do have, as I said, to, in, in response to another question, there are other uh, mechanisms that we're looking at, we did look at, uh, but we have, a, we have a challenging period ahead of us, as I said. Uh, the instability uh, and the uh, aggression of uh, Vladimir Putin is, is going to be affecting us for some period of time, not just at the pumps, but at the, uh, at the checkout at the grocery store and a host of other areas. And we want to make sure uh, that we're monitoring that and uh, ensuring that we have the resources to respond uh, when required. Uh, I have been engaging with my colleagues, the premiers across the country, uh, on this issue, we came, uh, we, we, we are driven by consensus, the Council of the Federation, and we weren't able to reach consensus on how we would approach the federal government uh, to see what steps they could take. Uh, but I do know I'm meeting with uh, the Prime Minister next week and affordability, inflation, the, the consequences that will have on a range of, of issues that are before our government and before the people of BC will be a very high priority. Mira, do you have a follow-up? Yes, um, and so this is a question just on another front for the Premier. Um, we are just wondering whether um, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh sought uh, advice from you regarding uh, the confidence and the uh, supply agreement. Um, you know, did he talk to you about it at all, and what advice did you give him, if any? Well, we did, we did talk about it uh, early on, uh, shortly after the election and, and before the, uh, the agreement was announced uh, earlier this week. Uh, I'm pleased to say that um, the work that we did, Andrew Weaver and I, to create a, a CASA agreement here in British Columbia to provide stable government uh, through our minority period, uh, has been duplicated in other jurisdictions. Uh, Yukon is using a similar model for their minority parliament right now. Uh, when there were minority governments in uh, New Brunswick and Newfoundland, I spoke to not just the premiers but the opposition leaders about how we were able to find a way to cooperate. And uh, I did uh, have that conversation with the Prime Minister as well as with Jagmeet Singh. I believe that what British Columbians and Canadians want is for elected representatives to cooperate and collaborate to, to get outcomes for them. Uh, only the most fierce of partisans, and you've seen this in the response to the agreement that was reached by uh, Mr. Singh and Mr. Trudeau, only the fiercest of partisans would want to continue fighting an election that was concluded last fall. What Canadians want is for their elected representatives, wherever they come from, whatever their political stripe, roll up your sleeves and work for us. Get things done for us. And I believe the confidence and supply agreement that we had here in British Columbia, as well as those that have followed, will set the template for how minority governments work now and into the future. And I would hope that the success of these approaches would allow majority governments to be more flexible in their engagements with opposition parties. And I would also hope that opposition parties would see the opportunity to be partners in the delivery of programs rather than just adversaries. Obviously, we need in our system to have an adversarial relationship in the le legislature or the House of Commons so that we can get better outcomes. But I think you can also get better outcomes from cooperating rather than just punching each other in the face. That's all the time we have this morning. Thank you for joining us. Thanks.